is Dr. Aliu Sokomba. He's the president of Nigeria Association of Resident Doctors, NARD. Thank you for joining us on the program. First, I'd like to start by asking why we're witnessing more doctors uh, isolated as a result of exposure to COVID-19 across the country. Thank you very much. Well, as we had continued to advocate that because of the inadequacy of personal protective equipment across the hospitals in this country, our health workers have continued to be exposed to this um, deadly disease. As we speak, um, at the moment, we have 29 doctors who have been tested, confirmed to be, who have been confirmed to be COVID-19 positive, while over 377 have been quarantined, having been exposed to a confirmed case of uh, COVID-19. This has continued to corroborate our earlier claim that the healthcare workers across the various hospitals in Nigeria are not adequately protected. And as a result, we have continued to experience more and more healthcare workers, especially doctors, testing positive to this disease. As we speak, as again, we have five doctors who have died from this COVID-19, cutting across various regions uh, in this country, Lagos, um, Katina, Uyo, um, and um, Umwaya, and so on. So the point we're trying to make here is that we have continued to advocate and clamor that our health workers are not adequately protected. And um, this is already manifesting in the reality that these people are coming down with the disease and some are already dying from the disease. And in spite of this reality, we have been promised beyond um, the, the personal protective equipment inadequacy. Some governors in the country have taken it to another level to demoralize their healthcare worker. Give an instance of Kaduna State Governor who earlier... Uh, Hither to the COVID-19 outbreak was paying his doctors 63% of the agreed salary. And upon uh, his emergence from the COVID-19 isolation, which he admitted profusely that the healthcare workers, including the doctors, have played tremendous efforts towards his um, recovery, announced a reduction of 25% of their salary. That makes it 20, 75% of the 63 three percent of their salary and uh, hither to that again well, the doctors in the state we are planning to embark on an industrial action to press home their demand of receiving 63 percent of their salary as if that was not good enough the governor had thought it wise to further reduce their salary by 25 percent as an appreciation for what they have been doing unfortunately this is coming at a time when other parts of the world are considering rolling out measures to appreciate their healthcare workers and make get them more motivated towards um, doing their best, uh, it is happening that some states, like Kaduna State Governor, had taught it that this the way best way to appreciate his healthcare workers is by cutting their salary by 25 percent. This is not just happening in Kaduna. Then right State. now, so you're saying that apart from having more available PPEs and equipment to work, you're saying that uh, resident doctors should also be paid their salaries as well and that this will prevent uh, more of the doctors being isolated and then coming down with the virus uh, and dying as a result of that. But I'd also like to ask how much training and education is going uh, for resident doctors on how to handle uh, or work uh, in this pandemic era? Well, obviously, the COVID-19 had brought to bear the reality of the poor residency funding in this country. The residency training program, which is a program that, spe that produces specialists at the end of the day, the microbiologists, the public health physicians, the all the other specialists, anesthetists, has hitherto not been receiving funding for over a decade now. And in spite of the provision of the funding in the Residency Training Act, and this is one reality we've had to deal with. Unfortunately, even the 2020 budget, as we speak, does not capture any form of training for uh, resident doctors. What we have now is a makeshift arrangement, a form of training that has been made available. And of course, you will agree with me that any training that you're putting up may not impact effectively and efficiently as it will have if we had a well-organized 
uh, program like the residency training program receiving the appropriate funding it deserves. So what we are currently having is a form of training specifically for COVID-19 and I believe that that is also not widespread. It's not cutting across the various hospitals. And as we had continued to emphasize, let us de-emphasize this idea of taking care of healthcare workers at the isolation centers only. Because other healthcare workers outside these isolation centers are also exposed because every patient is a potential COVID-19 patient and they should be treated as such. Instead of focusing on training only a few that will be manning and managing isolation and treatment center, the training should be made available to all health workers across Nigeria because all health workers are exposed. For example, now in Kano, all the doctors working in Aminu Kano Teaching Hospital, all the doctors working in the National Orthopedic Hospital, Dala, are exposed because the patients coming to the hospital don't have it written on their forehead that I am a COVID-19 patient or not. So the training should not be just for those working in isolation centers and treatment center. It should be decentralized and, and it should, the government should ensure that all health workers are trained with this reality that all health workers are exposed as a result of the community tra uh, transmission of the disease. And then perhaps we should also have frequent testing for those on the front line. We appreciate your time, uh, Dr. Lisa Kumba, President of NAR. Thank you for joining us on the program.